sit, close your eyes and just take these first few moments to come into your body. Just scanning through your body. How does it feel to be in your body this morning? Maybe there are areas feeling a little sore or tight. Maybe you feel full of energy. Maybe you feel good. Maybe you feel a bit sleepy. You know, just really acknowledging what's going on on the inside. Because another layer to yoga, especially yin yoga, is the meditative side of it that mindfulness part of it. So you can call it what you like, mindfulness, meditation, feeling relaxed. That will be interwoven in the poses that we do today. So begin to slow your breath down and deepen your breath. The breath is one of the most important parts of the yoga practice and it's what will be a good gauge for whether you are in the right uh, variation of the pose. If you've gone in too far, Maybe you could go in more. If you can, take nice, relaxed breaths, you're probably in the right place. If you can't breathe, you have to take you know, short, shallow breaths, then maybe it's a sign from your body to step back. Really good, long breaths in. Slow breaths out. Really good. So you can blink your eyes open and the first um, pose, not really a pose, it's a pressure point that we're going to do is um, really good for your Achilles. So from seated, you probably don't need to sit on anything. You're going to sit with the legs out in front of you and you can begin pressing your thumbs into the back of the lower leg. And as you move up, really from the heel, it might feel a little bit tender. It might feel really sore, okay? This is urinary bladder one, but a nicer name, the guardian of peace. So you can just give it a little massage. Oh, it's quite tight, especially if you've been going on lots of walks, <laughs> doing anything with your legs. Now, as you move up really to the beginning of the calf muscle, the squishy bit at the back, this is where you're going to push the thumbs in and up. Okay, so really pushing in and up into that. So we're just doing one leg at a time. You don't need to do both together. We're going to do both sides. Mm. Yeah, if you don't feel it, give me a wave. Everyone feels it. Good. So you don't feel it. So, um, back of the leg you're going up the middles if there was a seam along the back of your leg and then when you get probably two-thirds up you're pushing in and up and if you're not sure go a little to one side a little to the other i think you're a bit low go higher up your leg higher up yeah and right in the back into underneath the calf muscle so we put under here do you feel it more yeah great perfect and then we'll change and we'll do the other side. So again, just take some time. So you're going, just massaging really this meridian line. You might think what on earth is a meridian line. For, for all intents and purposes, they use it in acupressure, um, acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, I'm not an expert on that, but in yin yoga, we use these lines and these pressure points just to help release uh, the physical body as well you'll get energetic benefits too really nice so after you've massaged up and down a little bit you're pushing up into the beginning of the calf muscle up and underneath so if you see where i am on my leg here and it should feel quite tender so if you're not quite there you can you can go up again you could go a little to right little to left push more you know it's going to feel different on different people. 
really nice. Breathing in, to breathe out, give it a good push in and up, maybe increase that pressure. Nice deep breaths. Really good, couple more. And then you can release that and just relax the feet. And I didn't sit on the other side, but you might feel like a little rush of heat going back through the legs. Now, just an awareness of knees here. You might want to put cushions under the knees. You're tucking your toes underneath. We did this last week. So you can push back like this. This is good if the knees don't like to go fully into that uh, full bend, okay, full flexion. But otherwise, you could end up sat on your heels. You can prop with cushions or blocks or bolsters here to support the knee and stop it needing to bend so much. All right, so go into it. It's called toes, so that's where you're going to feel it. Yeah, give me a wave. If you don't feel it, the modifications aren't working. Really good, lovely. And so as we sit here, you're gonna breathe deeply. Know that you can come out, it's about two minutes here. Inhale, exhale, you're gonna interlace the hands and round your back. So I've got a lovely rounded spine, pushing back into the shoulder blades, breathing in, breathing out. Really nice, and then bringing those hands behind, drawing the elbows towards each other, long breaths in, long breaths out. So if you need your hands on the floor support, don't worry about these. These are more of a distraction than part of the practice. Really good, little turn to one side. Nice breath there. And then we'll slowly turn, a little gentle twist to the other side. Really good, breathing in. It should feel pretty intense now. And then you can come forwards, release, ah, tap the feet out. Feels really good to come out, doesn't it? You feel that heat, really nice. So from here, again, now with knees, is anyone's knees really not like that? I read something about a knee. No, all good. Okay, so we'll sit here. You want to feel a stretch through the front of the feet, the ankles. If it's too much, you can put a cushion under your feet, okay? And this will help not only reduce the stretch, but also make it softer. So that's a really nice modification. So you might be here, you might lean back, you might have a cushion between the knees or a bolster. I keep giving options, and as I keep giving options, they'll get more intense, okay? So, and if you want, it can be a balance. If you want to start to use the core as well, you can. You know, yin shouldn't be confused with restorative yoga. It's not just stretching. There is an element of mental challenge as well as that physical challenge in the body. Really good. No discomfort in the knee. That's really important. And, and no pain, okay? Pain is a sign from the body that you should move away from it in yoga. Really good. So you could just be here where I am. Really nice. And then slowly coming out so you can release, you can tap out through the feet or anything you like. You know, it's just, you should feel some heat and warmth going through those feet. Okay, lovely. So the first place we're going is down on the floor. We're going to lay down on our front. It is a back bend, so please be aware of any back issues. If you have disc issues in the lower back, you're going to start here, head on your hands. And I would say for most people, that is a safe position for their back. It is an extension. Okay, lying down, head on your hands. And, and so don't feel like you have to go any further than that. For a lot of backs, actually, extensions, back bends are very healing. But you may know your body and know that this will be its limit. Now, from there... You could come up, as I am, into a sphinx pose, elbows under your shoulders. Really good. The feet are probably about hip width apart. If it feels better to let them go wider, let them go wider. And you're pulling on the hands to 
lift your chest up so we really create that lovely openness in the front so we're beginning to meet the front of the body the front of the hips the hip flexors and then from there exhale taking one shoulder across looking back gentle twist it should feel nice lifting and then exhale twisting so you're just moving slowly side to side really good coming to the center now you might stay here i would say if you have a sensitive lower back this is as far as you should go especially if you've got anything going on with this you could though otherwise turn the hands out this is seal pose and maybe straighten the arms if you've done a lot of upper body stuff this is going to probably feel quite difficult quite quickly if your arms are tired you can bring the hands in more personally my back is is not up for that but some backs you know you're, you're just biomechanically different you know you have different bone shapes you might bring the hands in closer if it gets too much you can come out otherwise stay here and really send the breath into your belly Send the breath down into the digestive system. Really good. And maybe it feels a little bit tiring on the arms now. That's good. Yes, that's part of, part of the pose if you're up in seal. Really nice. So then you can put the elbows down. And if we're all now elbows down, the head down on the floor. So you're going to pause here. We take little pauses after the poses. They're called rebounds. Chance to feel what's been happening in the body. And then from here, you're going to push back from all fours into a child's pose. So my knees are together. I'm looking to sit on my heels. Again, you can prop for knees if it doesn't feel right. And you can round over the legs. You can have the hands forwards, but you can prop to get the head down. I'd recommend having your forehead on something rather than hovering in the air. So settle in to that child's pose. I'm just going to start a timer. This is a lovely pose in itself. It's, it's really nice um, to help with stress and anxiety it's a forward bend forward bends will stimulate your parasymp activate your parasympathetic nervous system so use your intention and breathe into your lower back can you send the breath right down into your lower back breathing there to release and relax the fascia all the tissue there really good you've got just a few more breaths and then when you're ready you can come up to an all fours position so we're going to come into a hip flexor stretch and it could be i'd say for most people i realize i'm cutting the head off but you'll probably want a cushion under your knee this is the most accessible of the ones i'm going to show you but i am going to give you other options so you're leaning forwards till you feel something not a lot we've got three minutes which is a long time okay so feel about halfway from nothing to ten uh, i'm about to pop my muscle okay so you're leaning into it this is the first option you might end up with your hands down and eventually you might end up actually pulling the foot in towards you it's quite intense all right so start feeling about 50 percent you could also some people really like this lie down so i've got 
one leg behind and I can lie back. Okay, obviously any uh, sensitive knees, this is not your pose. Okay. So I'd say those are the best options. Now, as we go into it, give me a wave if this is not, none of those are working. Good, lovely, great. So leaning forwards, I'm gonna start the timer. We'll say it's three minutes from there. You can do it for longer, but you, I feel like I don't know you well enough to make you do it for five minutes yet. I'm joking, just we, we're not doing it for five minutes. <laughs> really good. So you're feeling something and that feeling something could turn into feeling a lot. So don't worry if you think, oh, I'm not really feeling a lot yet. That's fine, there's time. And if you are feeling a lot, you know, you, you can always back out of it a little bit. Really good. So you, you've had your first minute. And this is where the mental challenge comes in. Can we sit with these, what are very strong sensations in the body, maybe not pleasurable sensations in the body, but still breathe in a calm, relaxed way. Not be scared of these deep sensations in the fascia, the connective tissue of the body. So as we come towards the halfway point, and some of you uh, want to make this more intense, it's the, the opposite hand to the front leg comes down if you want to take the foot. I mean, there are other variations. It shouldn't really be the bone of the knee down on the floor. Um, some people take both hands to the foot. Uh, you could do that as well, but I feel like that makes it more of a chest opener than feeling it very strongly in the thigh. And if you're lying back, you just end up lying back more flat on the floor. Really good. You've got just over a minute to go. Stick with it. Really nice. Breathing in. Breathing out. So you're using these slow, deep breaths to maintain your focus and it's those lovely long exhalations which are um, allowing the body to let go really good and if you are in a more upright position so you know this is only if you're here this option really or if you want to come away from just hands on the floor you could lift the arms up if you're lying back or you're holding a foot then I would just stay there and that lifting of the arms you will feel it, it increases that lovely stretch through the fascia the tissue at the front of the body not long to go breathing in really nice you could reach the hands behind you I feel your pain Really good. It's a strong, uh, strong area of the body to open. Really good. And then, so if you've been lying down on your back, then do come up to release the knee. So if we're here, we're coming out, maybe you're going to lie down on your front. If you've been lying back, you're going to sit up and then roll away from the knee to release the leg. Okay, and then you might lie down on your back and you'll probably just want to take a pause. <clears throat> Give that hip a chance to settle. And after a few breaths, you'll probably be ready to do the other side. So then you're coming to the same pose, unless for any reason it hurts your knee. So the other leg will come forwards. You might be leaning here, you might have a cushion under the knee, you might feel it more with the hands down, leaning forwards. So just finding your way, hopefully, just reset the timer in a pos into a position where you can be fairly still, at least for this first minute. Great. So if, if you're not happy, you need any assistance, just give me a wave. And so settling in. 
And for these first few breaths, really allowing yourself to feel the front of that leg that you're opening. I didn't mention it on the other side, but you could be feeling it um, mainly in the quad, or you could be feeling it a lot in the hip flexor. And, and it can go, you know, in between. You might just be feeling loads in, in both. And if you are upright, you'll probably feel it in the other glutes as well as, as just as, as effort. So there's lots of places but where you shouldn't feel it is the knee. We're never trying to stretch that. Really good. So you've had a minute. If you made any adjustments, then now is the time. You could always see if you could take the foot. Knowing that one side will probably feel quite different to the other, so you don't have to do the same. Breathing slowly. As you breathe slowly, the breath will get deeper. And as we move through the practice today, I'm gonna to talk less so that eventually there'll be these silent moments and I'll just be letting you know a time and you can take that as almost a little awareness bell. You know, in that moment, were you feeling the body breathing or were you lost in thought? Lovely, so as we come to the final minute, if you want to rise up, so you're in this upright position, you could again reach those arms up. You don't need to, if it feels enough where you are, then by all means stay there. You might reach the arms behind, interlace them, getting even more of an opening through the tissue at the front. Really good, not long to go. You've got 30 seconds. Breathing in, that's about five slow breaths. Breathing out, really good. You might think I've taken five breaths. Maybe mine are longer than yours, really good. Five seconds to go. And then releasing, hands down, take your time. Coming out so you can lie down on your front or on your back, pause, feeling the front of the legs, the front of the hips. And the pause is also really a chance for everything just to reset. Take everything to reset in the body. And you can feel it, these are quite deep poses. So for the next pose, you might wanna sit up so you can have a look. So now we're gonna find our way into the glutes, the side of the hips and then the back of the hips. This is also nice for uh, the arms as well. So I'm trying to work out a way to get the whole of me in the shot. So you're gonna lie down. <laughs> You might need a cushion or something for your arms to go on, probably not your head. So I'm lying in a straight line, arms come up and over, and I move my legs, let's say over to the right, so we're all doing the same, and then my upper body over to the right as well. And so for a lot of people, hands will be down on the floor. But if your arms are hanging in the air, you might be able to prop them, or if it's still uncomfortable for your shoulders, you're bringing them down, okay? And then you might cross ankle. Bananasana, banana pose. So you're lying down on your back. <clears throat> it's like a little warm up for your hip before we get into the really juicy stretch. So laying down on your back, take your arms up over the head, really nice, and then over to your right, those feet, those legs shuffle over to the right and are both of your hips down on the floor, both um, of your glutes down on the floor, really nice. We've got three minutes, so there's no rush to feel a lot. And some people, this is a very natural shape for their body to go into and you can almost bend in, in, in half, but for other people, this will be quite strong. No pulling or discomfort. 
in the lower back that's really important okay if you're feeling this in the lower back then you're going to come out of it a bit i think somebody came in and out i'll show you the pose again once you're connected yeah so if you just came in and you're not sure what we're doing we're doing balanasana so we lie in a straight line then we take arms over to right legs over to the right and maybe across the ankles. So we're about halfway through. Remembering you can move the arms if it becomes uncomfortable, just bring them alongside your body. Yeah, don't worry about holding them over the body if it doesn't feel good. And so you might be feeling enough. If the sensation has gone, then you could uncross the ankles, maybe move those legs and the upper body a little more over to that right side. Really good. You're breathing into the side of the body and here it's the gallbladder meridian line, all about initiative, courage, good judgments. you're going to count your last five breaths. Whenever you finish those five breaths, you're just gonna slowly come back into a neutral position. So you're lying on your mat, body in a straight line. You might wanna look down your legs and check if you've come back fully straight. You may even feel a little bit wonky because we've only done one side. Arms are alongside your body. Short, few breaths just to pause. Really good. And then when your hip is settled, you can reach your arms up over the head and take the arms and your upper body a little over to your left side. And then shuffle the feet, the legs over to that left side as well. And so either put height um, props underneath the hands to see if you can support your shoulders. If you're still feeling any pinching or discomfort, then your arms come alongside the body. That's really important. Lovely, and maybe on this side you feel it more quickly maybe it's easier so just adjusting how much you go into that lovely curve with the body along the side of the body and then maybe crossing the ankle over and you can cross it either way because some people feel more crossing sort of the ankle of the inner curve but i might say most people feel more crossing the outer ankle so you can play around with that Yin yoga can be a little bit vague. You know, are you getting a lot of options? Well, you could do this or you could do this. It's because all of our bones are different. So, and all of our histories, the stories and the tissues of our body are different. We do different things. We've done different things. So we will, it would be weird if we all needed to do exactly the same pose in the same way. You have two more minutes there. Body is still, breathing is slow. And you are feeling all those points where your body meets the floor. Really allowing your body to lean down into that support of the earth beneath it.
You have 45 seconds to go. If you need to adjust the pose, you're welcome to, you know, go in more, move out. Lovely, so take your time, let your body come out slowly, again into that neutral position, lying on your back, legs straight or knees bent, whatever feels most comfortable. If you need to make any movement, then you're welcome to do that, otherwise just lying still and feeling the body settle on its own. So, oh, there's so many options now. Okay, so come up to seated. I should say, go and make a cup of tea and come back. No, there's not that many. But the most important thing is there is no discomfort in the knees. And I would say for a lot of knees, pigeon pose, taken in a yin way, if your knee is sensitive, leave it out. Okay, or just remember you can come out of it. So. Traditionally, to get into the glutes, we take one leg forwards and we come down into our piriformis stretch pigeon pose. So it looks like that from the side, this from the front. But it, it's not, you know, if your knee is sensitive, there's a lot of weight through the knee joint. So in yin, I, I really like to teach deer pose. If your glute is very tight, you want a block or maybe two cushions underneath the right the left hip so we'll start on the left side and then you would come forwards and you'd be feeling a lot in your glute or maybe you're there okay or maybe you're there so there can be some uh, movement now the back leg in deer pose could <clears throat> look like this or it could go back more I would say usually the more it goes back, the more intense it will, it will be, but it depends on your hip, your hip socket, the, the femur head, the greater crantor. If you know that your hips are quite open, they like to do external rotation, then you might like one of these other options that I'd say is more intense and probably not suitable for all hips, especially if you're quite tall with long legs, you, you might not feel it. So you could take like a double deer, so the left leg underneath, the right leg on the top, okay? So I've got my ankle towards the knee and the other knee sort of on top. If you're like this, it's not the pose, okay? So you could take this one or you could take shoelace. So you're taking the leg over the top, toes pointing to the side, and maybe the other leg as well. And so you're feeling it here. Okay, you won't feel it in the flesh of the glute so much, but you'll feel it quite deeply in the, the hip pocket, the hip joint. Oh gosh, so should we go back over those? So you could do, and some people just love normal pigeon pose. Okay, so left leg coming forwards, probably uh, a little bit of an angle here, back leg coming behind, lying down. But for sensitive knees, or maybe you just want to try something different, deer pose. So you might have a prop under the hip, front shin parallel to the front of your mat in most cases. And the back leg really, where you can use that to make it more intense or the hip more comfortable. And coming forwards, okay. And or double deer, yeah. So settle in now. Is everyone happy or wave at me? Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, the waving is, do you need a hand if you're waving at me? No, okay, that's fine. Sorry, should be more clear. Uh, yeah, great. So settling in, if you're in that deer pose, you feel like you're being pushed over to the side, that is when you'd want like a cushion or, or a block under your hip.
great. Four minutes either side. So feel about half. Really good. Getting comfortable. Lovely. Yeah, and so if you're in um, the double deer or the shoelace pose, you can lean forwards to make it more intense. And in, in any of them, you're leaning forwards. And so it's just that continued movement down to the earth that's going to get deeper and deeper into the body. So find somewhere your body can be still. Close your eyes if you need to, to remove any external distractions, visual distractions. And... Of course, if something changes, you can come out of the pose. Listen to your knees. You've had a minute already. The time's flying by. Can you stay in your inner space, your inner world? You allow yourself to feel these sensations, breathe with them. Ah, I think somebody's just come in again. Sarah, did you see the intro into these poses or do you want me to show you? Oh, you didn't see them. Okay, so we're doing the glutes. So I'll, I'll show you. If you are still there, you are still there. We're halfway through two minutes. So Sarah, are your knees okay? No, okay. So I would say deer pose. So you're going to have uh, the left leg. Do you know it? Okay parallel and then leaning yeah perfect that's it lovely that was easy really nice yes you could be there and for some people you know if you think well i'm not feeling a lot it, it just might not be a position you know or a part of your body that's holding on to tension so just enjoy that it's, it's a nice easy pose. You've had three minutes, you have one more minute there. Stick with it, relax the shoulders, relax the face. You know, tension has a funny way of just moving somewhere else or clenching the teeth or scrunching up the eyes. Stay with your breath. Thirty seconds to go. So wherever you've been, you've been there a long time, so please come out slowly. You're going to probably lean onto that hip to help release the leg or lean back and release both legs. Lie down on your back. Lie down on your back. Let that left hip settle. Feel maybe what continues to happen in your body as you release the pose. And then coming back up, so you'll probably do the same thing as the other leg, but 
you can always adjust it. You could do a different pose. So same options, you've got traditional pigeon, you've got deer with the leg, front leg at a right angle, back leg for comfort or making it more intense. If you're really leaning to the side, then put something, a height under your hip. You could do your double deer, Or, and so with the double deer, you've got now got the right leg underneath, or maybe you know which side you did, or the right leg over the top, maybe the other leg underneath for shoelace. Okay, if you're not sure, give me a wave if you need assistance, otherwise just settle in. So make, uh, make yourself as comfortable as possible. You want to start comfortable as you can, in this pose, moving towards comfortably uncomfortable. That is our intention of yin yoga. Really good. And if you're not used to holding these stretches for a long time, um, then of course it's going to be a challenge. You know, it's like if I go and do like a different class and someone asks me to hold like a strength pose for more than like 10 breaths, it's like, oh, why? But, you know, you get used to it. Your body gets used to what you do, but it's very adaptable. Your fascia is amazing. This big piece of connective tissue connecting every single cell of your body, holding everything together. And it will adapt to change. If you keep asking it to stretch and to move, it, it will. And any tight spots, any bits that have got maybe, imagine it being dry and stuck, everything will begin to melt and soften. And then the little layers will be able to gently slide over one another again. Really good. So you've had 90 seconds. You're in control of these poses. You can always back out of them. But as you become really present, present in the now, you know, really aware of your body, you may also feel those moments when the body releases and it invites you to go deeper in. It invites you to move further into the pose. Might not be today, so don't worry. Close the eyes if you need to, to keep the focus inwards. Really good, stick with it. You've got one minute left. Your body is still, your breathing is slow, relaxed. You've got three breaths, three slow breaths. Good. 
and then coming out of it just as slowly, just as mindfully as you did on the other side, bringing the weight away from the knee, rolling over to the side, lie down on your back, Take a pause, feel the rebound in the body, in the tissues. Maybe you feel them in the energy lines, this warmth tingling around that target area. Really good. So our final pose will be lying on our back. If you have um, a favorite pose that you like to do, you feel we, you want to do a lying down twist instead, then you're welcome to do that. Um, and I'll let you know when it's halfway through. Otherwise, we're going to get into the inner thighs and finish with either a happy baby pose. So you might be holding the feet like this, pulling them in, pushing knees out to the side. That's one option for happy baby. Or holding the feet or the legs. If you want, you can do half and a half as well. Or you might bring soles of the feet together, knees relax out to the side, arms can be really wherever you want. As they come up over the head, you're gonna feel more in the chest. So happy baby pose, or a half, or sleeping butterfly pose. We have four minutes there, and it can get quite intense in sleeping butterfly. It's got a nice gentle name, but for some hips it will feel like quite a lot. Oh yeah, lovely. Yeah, you could do it against the, the cabinet. If you've got a wall, you can also just lie with your, your legs going wide out to the side. But really good. So settling in. Settling in to feel the inner hips. Breathing there works quite well as if you want to do half in happy baby and then half in butterfly when those hips are open as well that, that's another another way you can do it and so hopefully now as we come to the end of the practice it's easier to find stillness in a pose there's often a need to fidget, move around, am I right in the pose, am I there? It's like, actually what we're looking for is stillness, just feeling something and then being content with that, with that sensation, and sitting with that sensation, knowing that it's enough. I don't think I can see any twists, but if someone is doing something, then we are halfway through. There's a few of you I can't see, so just in case. Feel the support of the earth beneath you. Feel the points where your body meets the earth, these grounding points. And when we can truly come into our body, the vehicle of our body, then we, we can really be present in the now because to be feeling your body there, feeling your breath there, you, you can't be anywhere else. You can't be thinking ahead of tomorrow, even later today, you can't be going over stories of the past. To be in the present and the now, the quickest way to get there is just to feel yourself in your body breathing. 
and you will arrive here. You've got just under a minute to go. And if you are in sleeping butterfly with the knees out to the side, you'll take your hands outside the thighs, close the legs. You might like to take your feet wide apart on the mat and just begin to rock the knees a little bit side to side, very slowly, just to get a little bit of internal rotation in the hips. So please take your time. And then we'll be finding our way into our final resting pose, which could look like this, just legs straight, arms straight alongside the body. Or if it feels more comfortable, knees bent, resting on each other, if that's better for your back. Close your eyes. You might have cushions under the knees. You might have a cushion under your head. Be comfortable. We've got uh, at least three minutes here, nice, really long relaxation. So just begin to let go of any control you might have had over your breath. Allow yourself this time to be completely still quiet. This is a reading from Dana Folds. Just for now, just for now, without asking how, let yourself sink into stillness. Just for now, Lay down the weight you so patiently bear upon your shoulders. Feel the earth receive you and the infinite expanse of the sky grow even wider as your awareness reaches up to meet it. Just for now, allow a wave of breath to enliven your experience. Breathe out whatever blocks you from the truth. Just for now, be boundless, free, with awakened energy tingling in your hands and feet. Drink in the possibility of being who and what you really are, so fully alive that the world looks different, newly born and vibrant. Just for now.
Slowly begin to feel the weight of your body. Begin to deepen your breath and feel the inhalations waking you up. Begin to move your head gently side to side. Take your time. You might like to stretch the body out, reaching the arms over the head, the toes away. Bending your knees, you can give the knees a hug. And then eventually finding your way with the eyes closed over to one side. And all the way up to a seated position on your mat. Any comfortable position, we're not going to be here very long. Take a moment to notice how it feels to be in your body now, the end of the practice. As you inhale, take a nice deep breath and reach your arms over the head, palms touch. And as you exhale, thumbs to the crown, to your forehead, and down towards the floor. And you can open your eyes. Namaste. Um, just going to. Stop the recording.